Fallout 4 Assault Rifle is certainly visually unique. Some people regard it as ugly. I personally think it's beautiful in its own way, like it's a love child of a Vickers machine gun and some science fiction, art deco-y type anti-aircraft gun. Regardless of how you feel about it, I decide I was gonna build one. So, today, I'm gonna show you how to build your very own Fallout 4 assault rifle. I'm Yasu, and I run a little 3D print shop called Hero Creations. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can 3D print, finish, and then paint your very own Fallout 4 assault rifle in a few easy steps. Here goes. To print this build, I used ABS filament from Monoprice for the body and wood filament for the faux wood grips and handles. Since the length of the model was around a meter long, I clearly had to split up the model in order to get it to fit on my Maker Select beds, which max out at about 200 by 200 by 108 millimeters. To accomplish this, I used a program called NetFab to make quick and dirty plane cuts. Though if I were doing this all over again, I would simply split up my base model in Fusion 360. From there, it was smooth sailing. 300 hours of printing later, and I had all the pieces to the rifle printed. I've listed my print settings in the description below. To assemble the rifle, I opted to experiment with ABS cement, which can be either bought at your local hardware store or created by combining scrap ABS with acetone. I like using ABS cement over other glues because it creates a solvent bond by essentially dissolving the two contacting surfaces together. In my experience, solvent welds are the strongest way to join two parts together. While ABS cement is a bit messy, it is fortunate that the excess can be removed with light sanding and side cutters. Unlike other common 3D printable plastics like PLA, ABS is remarkably soft and easy to sand. So I invested a bit of time in sanding the entire surface using a relatively rough 180 grit sanding sponge. Since you're kicking up a lot of dust, you absolutely don't want to breathe this in. So please be safe and use a respirator. After I felt like I'd covered the entire print with my first pass of sanding, I moved on to spraying all the parts with Rust-Oleum Filler Primer and using Bondo Spot Pie to fill in any gaps and stepping like these. Once it dried, I sanded the excess off until it was smooth, as you can see here. For this stage, I used 200 to 800 grit sandpapers. You'll have to repeat this process of sanding, spraying, filling, and then sanding again until the surface is acceptably smooth and you cannot see or feel any layer lines or gaps. One optional but nifty feature I put into my rifle was the inclusion of magnets where the barrel and the rest of the rifle meets, allowing me to literally break the rifle in half safely of course, and have an easier time traveling or stowing it in my luggage. Pretty cool, eh? Now I know surface prep and sanding can be a real drag, but believe me, the effort is worth it when it comes to painting. My first step was to paint the whole thing in a flat black paint. Then I started dry brushing on various metallics with heavier strokes around the edges and lighter strokes around the center. The idea here is to make it look like worn metal as the edges always get scraped and worn down more than the centers of the part. So here's what dry brushing is if you're not familiar with it. Basically, you take your brush, preferably like a, a really ratty chip brush. The stiffer the bristles, the better I find. You dip it into the very edge of it, into the uh, cap or your palette take a little time out of paint, dab the heck out of it into uh, a cloth or uh, a napkin, and then what the little itty bitty slivers that are left is what you start scraping. Like that's the best way, you're not really brushing it on, you're scraping it against the part. And you wanna vigorously scrape at certain points, just harsh, uh, just kind of rough brush strokes as you see there, you're not really doing any fine work. That's dry brushing. The other thing you wanna do when you're dry brushing is vary up the colors that you use. For this assault rifle, I used five different metallic acrylics, dark steel, silver, copper, bronze, and gunmetal. 
And they're just a mix of Craftsmart and Americana acrylics that you can get from your local craft store for a few bucks. Now I realized later on that the foregrip of the rifle is a more solid, lighter metallic color. So I ended up mixing up some grays and carefully brushed it on the print. Now for the wood filament groups, I used a brownish red lever die to stain them. Why lever die, you might ask? It's because I didn't have any wood stain on hand and I really didn't want to go through the expense of uh, buying it. So I ended up using what I had on hand, which was lever die. So as a final finishing touch, I opted to do something special with how I painted the old anti-aircraft style sights that the assault rifle has. I opted to use a wax-based paint or colorant. I'm not entirely sure what to define it as, called rub and buff. And this is different than standard paint because what happens is you're essentially taking this, this waxy substance, putting it onto like a, a soft cloth, like a t-shirt, and then just vigorously rubbing it on. And initially it's kind of like, it's, it's gushy and kind of weird, but as the, the friction starts to build up, it actually becomes super shiny. And assuming your surface prep is on point, it looks like real metal, like uh, not necessarily chromed, but like a, like a highly polished piece of silver or whatever color you end up using. So I ended up using silver in this case. And that is how you make a Fallout 4 assault rifle. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to build a Fallout 4 assault rifle. All the 3D models and printable files are available on my Patreon for $10, which also gets you whatever files of the month are currently dropping. So that could be stuff from Apex Legends, like right now for this month, or who knows for the next month. I definitely recommend you checking it out. I'll link in the description below. Anyways, it would mean a ton to me as a small growing channel if you'd drop a, uh, a like and a subscribe. It means a ton. It would help me grow this channel to be so much better. Anyways, um, if you have any more questions about the builds or any other feedback, I'd love to hear it. Feel free to comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Can't wait to bring you more Fallout goodies.